Change of scenery for the Jamaica, Rear Nephew Jamaica Premier League. We are on the north coast of Jamaica in the Garden Parish of St. Anne as we await the champions, Mount Pleasant against new arrivals, Treasure Beach, who sit at 13th in the table here at the Drax Hall Sports Complex. It's a home game for Mount Pleasant and they will play in front of their home crowd, the biggest parish in Jamaica, the parish of St. Anne. Lovely conditions here, beautiful skies, and we await some great football between these two. The last time they met, Mount Pleasant got the better of them by two goals to nil. The coaching staffs, well, they had a lot to say. Let's hear from them. Theodore Whitmore and Omar Wedderburn. Coach Whitmore, you, you come up against one of the teams in the relegation zone. These are the games that uh, you have to do a lot of work to motivate your team. How is the, the, the mindset of your team? Well, again, it's a, it's a game that we, we understand. Um, it's a game we can't take lightly because um, this is the, the next round now where everybody, every game is important to everyone because, you know, you're coming up against relegation, top six, everything. So it's not a game we're we, we taking lightly this afternoon. You're at the top of the table for a long time. I mean, what was the mood of the players in terms of that? Is that one of the main motivating factors for them wanting to win to get back to the top? Well, no, every game we play, we wanted to win, you know, and, and this game is, is no difference, you know. So, again, we know what to do. We just have to apply ourselves, you know, and do our best, especially in the final third of the pitch this afternoon. Talking about final third, you've acquired Shaquille Bradford. You do have a lot of other big-name players at, the, at the, the, the top of your team. How is it in terms of keeping them happy? Are there any dissenting voice from anyone wanting to go elsewhere? Well, again, it's, it's what you do on the, 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 the training ground on the day that, that gets you in the team on a, on a Sunday or a Monday. You know, um, we want to be competitive in training. You know, we, we don't want anybody to sit there and think that there's any game there for them. You know, so everybody come out and, and, and work on the day. Coach Weatherburn, your objective for the season is five points away from you. I mean, tell me, what is it about you today that is going to begin to cut those those points away? Well, honestly, you know, we get some numbers right now, we get some players with Premier League experience, you know, so we have a look of mixture you know, of experience and youth. And I think um, I start to see a better balance, you know, but it's going to take a time for them to manifest in one and get that, that rhythm that they really need. But, you know, we are not scared. Yes. Not, not, not scared. I know you're not scared. You're a group by the name of Crocodile. In terms of the players you've acquired, you talk about rhythm, but for now, it's not so much about performance, is it? It's about result. Result count, you know. Your performance don't really count for me, you know. It result all the way. And, you know, come here, you're going to be an energetic, one pleasant team, but, you know, this is football, you know, and if you come to play, you're going to play. If you come to win, you're going to win. So it all depends on what we come here to do today, what the mindset that the players come out with today. So in terms of your team selection, the new players coming in, how many of them will see in the starting lineup? I guess you do a couple of games already, you know, so you will figure it out quick and fast. Well, Rambo Weatherburn will be hoping that his charges can figure it out, as he says, against this Mount Pleasant team that are a very difficult one to beat. Sit in third position at the moment behind Portmore and Cavalier and a chance to go top which is where they have been for majority of the season. This Treasure Beach team, they have already beaten them 2-0 on the 21st of December last year. And they'll be looking to do the double Mount Pleasant at home here. They've already seen their, well, parish colleagues in Lime Hall lose to Portmore United. Did make it difficult for Portmore, but at the end of the day, difficult doesn't count. They lost by two goals to nil. And a big match here for Treasure Beach, who do have some changes, as we'll see. A few new players in the starting lineup, the likes of Delano Anderson, Kadim Stone, Xavier, Xavier Lamont. We'll see them in a short while. And of course, the biggest acquisition in this transfer window has to be Shaquille Bradford. And he is fresh, sold from Waterhouse to Mount Pleasant for a fair sum. And you think that's well deserved based on his seven goals. Dwight Jeremiah, who is still with me. Fair sum, you feel? You want to tell me how much it is? Maybe I could. I could, I could call my, my good friend Gail and see what he, she, he can do for me. But yeah, definitely a big acquisition, I think, has shaken Harbour View. Um, because yes, it came from, from Waterhouse, but, but it, it is Harbour View who has felt the blunt of it because he was on loan there. 
and Kimoni Bailey probably having a, a nice smile with him saying hey I have another target player I can hit he scored some himself but Bradford straight into the starting lineup and with his form you expected that and with that big money move as you say Chris no surprises he's there um, but Treasure Beach is open just hoping that uh, Mount Pleasant take them a little bit lightly um, I don't know if they have the luxury of that being uh, third in the table and not having the best of forms um, they said they've gotten over it I, I, I heard a little birdie say whenever Mount Pleasant have problems it's never on the park it's off the pitch uh, so let's see what on the pitch they'll bring for us today mm. well Kimoni Bailey is back into the starting lineup he had some time out he was injured as well he does have four goals on the season the early part of the season Kimoni Bailey was their best scorer their biggest scorer of course now with Shaquille Bradford coming who came off the bench in that draw with Portmore United in match week 14 the Shaquille Bradford didn't find net but they ended up finishing the game one all as we see the quartet of uh, officials as well is going to be headed by O'Shane Nation FIFA Central referee we pause for the playing of Jamaica's national anthem Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Jamaican national anthem to set things off here between Treasure Beach and home team Mount Pleasant, the champions. In this match week 15 fixture, Treasure Beach almost with a, a Jamaica kit with this green and yellow and a flash of black. And Mount Pleasant in their full blue with white trim as they go through the pleasantries. Sule Makala will come into frame, the captain of Mount Pleasant. There are the officials, as we said, O'Shea Nation, the man with the whistle, Jermaine Easing, Gavin Carvalho, and Romaro Francis, his able assistants. O'Shea Nation ranked two in terms of Jamaica's FIFA officials behind Danian Parchment. And Probably in the number one position now, Parchment has been injured um, on the recovery path no so the captain of Jordan Nemhard the captain of Treasure Beach there but let's start with the Mount Pleasant lineup they shape up like this Daniel Russell between the sticks of course the captain Sule McCullough Fitzroy Cummins the big center back who was the captain of Vera United for quite a while Jamoy Topi national center back Shaquille Dyer Kimoni Bailey Ramon Howell Shaquille Bradford gets his first start for Mount Pleasant Nathaniel James the talented TNT midfielder uh, Demario Phillips and Daniel Green, fresh from his exploits in Vietnam, Daniel Green. And two seasons ago, he was a joint leading goal scorer. Has three goals so far in the season. He's been in good form and a, a good looking lineup. Let's see how the chemistry between Bradford and company go, Dwight. They shape up with what? A 4-3-3. A yeah, normally their formation, they have a wealth of talent and they play that formation because for them, it gets their better players on the park. Treasure Beach. They will shape up like this. Holmes between the sticks. Anderson comes into the lineup. Stone, Nemhard, the captain. Curtin Wright, who already has a goal this season. They need goals. Hall, Herrera, Tafar Thompson, Lamont, new into this lineup. They are number 17. Tedla Parchment and Romario Bryan. And Bryan, of course, has, has been around some time as well. Bryan. And some new faces in this Treasure Beach lineup, who, to me, their performance has been the better of the two in terms of the new teams 
in the Premiership and they already have 18 goals this season. They battle hard to Treasure Beach. They do, and um, a lot of times, uh, especially even against Arborview, they conceded two 90th minute goals. And even before that, had conceded, I think if you look at the stats, they probably concede more late goal than any other team. And then it was two shots on target from Vere when they lost 2 0. So they, they afforded Vere. So they don't give a lot of chances. It's a robust team. It's the way it's a Coach Weatherburn yeah, style. That's how he plays, and he uses the flank a lot. We expect him to, to go to those outlets a lot, very direct in his style. Um, Mount Pleasant, they'll monopolize possession. So I guess Treasure Beach, they won't be too uh, troubled by that. They'd come here expecting that. And he's just expecting to sneak a little surprise, he said to me off camera, that maybe if they're luck lusted, Mount Pleasant, he'll get them. Nation gets us on the way. Uh, Mount Pleasant on the ball. Yeah, well, the two goals that Mount Pleasant did get in that first fixture came late. Both second half goals as they drive into the area early and they win a corner right away to Mount Pleasant, Daniel Green on the left-hand side. But yeah, those two goals came late, a 70th minute penalty that the Tafawai Bygrave converted and Marlon Anel in stoppage time. Here are Mount Pleasant on the attack early into the area, Sulay Makala! It's goal number one, well, they left it late last time, this time they do it early. In the first minute of play, and Sule Makala the captain with his third of the season just a neat little flick past the goalkeeper Holmes and Treasure Beach a lot of work to do now holy for work as a matter of fact the first thing they have to do is figure it out they didn't figure this one out early enough and look at McCalla when that ball come back Treasure Beach they just went dead flat and McCalla unmarked unfollowed into the box and Treasure Beach behind, we just talked about, spoke about late goal. This one is as early as they come. McCullough straight from out the goal and scoring a goal because he was the one who went into the goal when they went down a man. They lost their goalkeeper against Portmore. He went into the goal and I think he completed his positions for Mount Pleasant, playing everywhere. And now he's the goal scorer. He's been really, uh, since the final, he was the one who really got them that cup on the final single-handedly scoring those two goals against Cavalier two headers and since then I've seen him provide so many assists playing at right back left back midfield and now scoring the goal that was a center forward run I'm if there was any yeah if Treasure Beach saw McCall and said oh they don't have to worry about him he's uh, not a goal scorer who well, could they say that he's the man I, I tell you what they just got they just shut off Premier League and winner at, at Portmore I United. I felt they, they, they thought too that that one was going to be claimed by the goalkeeper because the defender who was closest didn't flinch. Yeah, it was disappointing the way McCullough was put us play that so easily on the edge of the six yard box. Crazy. And Holmes should have been a little bit more commanding of his, of his six yard area and he paid the price. And again, I think there was no communication too. I don't know if the goalkeeper called, but the defender was static. There's Theodore but, but Whitmore. It, 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 what a start it will yeah. be for him. Theodore Tapper Whitmore scored quite a few goals in his time, but I'm not sure if he scored any in the first minute, the Tapper Whitmore. <laughs> yeah, when we get a chance, we'll probably get another look at it again, just to show you how, how static they were and, and where the, the lack of communication or mix-up could have come, because they felt that was a harmless ball. It's a green with the assist, and you spoke about him fresh coming back in from overseas. Yeah, didn't, didn't come back into the starting lineup initially, but since he's come back, he scores three goals in quick succession, one being a penalty, and he's been very involved in the play. I mean, very successful in his move to Vietnam, fresh after scoring, what, 13 goals it was in two seasons ago in the Premier League, joint leading goal scorer with a Tafari by Grave, and, yeah, continuing that kind of form and confidence and to pick up an assist. Good work. And where do we see uh, a Treasure Beach there? Signature move and play. They will go down one side, look to switch the point of attack, but it's it's a lot of flank play. Not the best pass there from Ramon Howell. But but I guess for them, uh, it's, it's disappointing the conceding the goals late. If there's any silver lining in it, it's pretty early. It gives them a lot of time to come back um, against our review. In those 298 minute goal, there was no time to, to recover. And Weatherburn left me to figure out the changes. I think he has a lot to figure out now. 
Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of secrets Omar <laughs> Widerman was trying to keep, but I can tell you that all things are out. <laughs> and um, yeah, these starting lineups are handed in so early, so I was trying to have a few comedic moments, but there'll be nothing funny about the start his team has made. Into the area, chance again. Well done, Holmes, on this occasion. That was Daniel Green. Yeah, first of speed, lots of pace, Daniel Green. And Holmes this time was strong. And had he been half a second later, he might have been taken it out of the net yet again. Yeah, nice, was good overlapping run from yeah, yeah brilliant. Got past the defender with ease. And yeah, it was looking not to, he didn't try a shot on goal, was looking to just draw it from the advancing goalkeeper to go closer to the goal line, then I cut back. Goalkeeper read that one and, and, and just got some fingers on it. Clean take, because had he gotten that one wrong and touch green, then that could have been a penalty. Uh, maybe he would have just picked himself up. Do you think the green it? second touch was just a little bit heavy? So by the time he wanted to pull it around Holmes, it was too close to him. I think when away. he got around the last defender, there was a little touch from it. So it bubbled a bit. It, 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 it just got away from him a bit. Not totally his touch, uh, but a slight deflection. Good work by Cummins there just to allow that to run out of play. A, a, a centre-back that really impressed me in his time at Vier United where he was a captain. In a team with limited talent at the time, or, or you know, not the strongest squad, Vier United, and they did well, I think, to stay in the Premier League. And they were led by Fitzroy Cummins, who eventually got a call up to the national team as well. And a very solid and steady centre back, Fitzroy Cummins. No surprise that he has taken over a, a permanent role in this starting 11 for Mount Pleasant. No, not at all. Not at all. Is uh, uh, and, and as, as the other Whitmore said in his in his interview, is is what they do on the training ground. They they bring in the talent. Part of it is to ensure everybody stays on top of their game, and it's the best set of players that will be picked Sunday or Monday, as he said in his own words. Demario Phillips brought down one of the few local base players that has been included generally in the national reggae boy squad, and a yellow card is brought out early for the tackle on, on him and that was quite late in the end from Hall, Jamaro Hall and he will go into the book. Just about seven minutes in and we'll have a lot to think about. It doesn't look good for Philip. Because of his national duties and so on, he has also been a player that has been in and out of the of the squad. There's Amari Deacon, who is not in the squad for the team today. He is, is a Mount Pleasant player now. Spent majority of his career at Arnett Gardens. It, 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 it's, it's a risk they take, and it, it, it's the consequence of moving to the big Mount Pleasant, as we'd call it. But they have taken it. Uh, I guess the incentive is quite good. Uh, to know that you come here and where you're coming from where you might have been the main man and a lot of playing time You come here and it's going to be harder for you, but I guess the when you say incentive you, you mean re remuneration <laughs> 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 It could be it being in St. Anne and, and a nice parish the garden parish it is Yeah, so no I just let the, I just let the fans pick whichever incentive they so no, think. So, no, but, no, but no surprise they're they, they taking care yeah. of yeah, I, I was we're about to say of. no secret that more no. pleasant is the richest of the Jamaican clubs. Yeah. And, and and they do flex their financial muscle. Yeah, certainly do. Our muscles. So don't forget half time. And hence why they're able to purchase so freely and Ladies, such a deep squad as well. In fact, no, generally take really the no, majority no, of the best talent. No financial fair time. play here. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> none of that introduced just yet. <laughs> but maybe if we have a, a, a couple other clubs that step up or have private ownership that comes in and takes over things, you might very well find that that may happen. Uh -huh. Who knows? Yeah one for the future but presently no treasure beach they are behind and trying to find a way back and a way out of the relegation zone only premier club club from the parish of saint elizabeth yeah on the south coast of jamaica as they look to make inroads into the defense of pleasant and a better pass there would have had them in i think it was it got to the intended target it's the touch that was bad i, I guess he needed to allow that to run across his body and and then he would have had a right foot shot on goal a chance for that 
but he took it and the way he took it he still would have left himself with a lot to do to turn and then face goal so on that Archman. occasion yeah I, I felt it was a wrong approach and technique Went with the outside the of the boot as yeah. you said, instead of that and away turn. from goal yeah, too that right. touch was going to take it away just let it come across the body and then a swing of the right boot maybe in the initial touch with the left foot as we see Tavar Thompson was also involved in the play as I said Treasure Beach do fight hard no real marquee signings in the window even though Coach Weatherburn did say that they brought in a few players, but no, as you say, no, no, no signing like Bradford, for no, example. No, he, 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 he did say he had enough oh, youngsters at, at some point in the season. I, I spoke to him off, off camera and he said he had that. Um, he wanted more experienced players now who are going to be able to uh, take him out of this zone. He's only five points off my lines at the start of the day. But at the moment, it's is either being maintained or could get worse depending on what Malines does and what happens in the rest of this encounter it's trying a spell of possession here from Treasure Beach and the stone there just couldn't find a pass and uh, Hall plays it back looking to break line going out wide from back to front Again, it's Mount Pleasant who are in possession and looking to build through the thirds. And that was a lovely ball. Bradford, he fell over. But it was James, the Trinidadian, that just looked to set Bradford free. wasn't happening there it's not a full press here from Mount Pleasant and because they've got the opening goal I guess they can afford to go with a half press and they'll just pick their moments when the press so uh, Limo, um say Limo Treasure Beach will seem to have a lot of ball deep into their own half but as they get further forward they're engaged that look like a, a blatant push machine nation says no though and play continues there was quite a few called for referee referee well in the first game it, 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 they did have a lot of issues with Odette Hamilton but boy did they were they happy when she played the advantage for that opening goal with Walsh ball out into touch disappointing from a Mount Pleasant perspective Daniel James there, just what, 20 years of age. Comes, of, comes from Trinidad and Tobago. Very talented left foot, creative player. But haven't really seen the best of him so far from Mount Pleasant. Still trying to find his way. Yeah, just a just glimpse of his, of, his, of his qualities every now and then. Like even that pass to Bradford, sure that he is, has that ability to pick a pass. But there's no doubt about his, 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 his potential, his, his, his talent. That's a dangerous pass, but it works out in the end. Comes to Nimhard. Now out wide. Not the best touch at all. From Lamont, one of the new players in the squad. Yeah, I think I think I'm all recognizing. And and I think yeah we can complain about the shoves and stuff but what they have to recognize is the referee in the middle he will dictate how what he will allow so if if you're given and he doesn't call it then this sum out and referee nation here will want number 11 here for stone stone it's it's because of the the tights the under the tights he has on has to be the same color of the predominant color of the shorts or it should not be showing and his green and i'm not sure what that was from stone stone's trying to trying to have have words with kimone bailey i think he's, stone, he's, yeah, he's and lost it for he, a while yeah he's lost it and even when he was coming off and the fourth official said come off the field he's like again the same thing asking what they're going to do or 
whatever with yeah. the fourth official. So I, I think he has to recognize who controls the game. And Nation here just reminding him of that. I think O'Shea and Nation is just saying to him what was the problem. So Stone yeah. is saying, look, it's a conversation between myself and Bailey. So, you know, it's nothing, nothing more than that. Stone, of course, one of the new players in this squad, <laughs> did play primarily, for, did play with Reno for a while, mm -hmm. as well as New Holland FC. So, yeah, not Holland United, right? Yeah. No, not Holland United. <laughs> right. I would have known him. Correct. <laughs> well, what a chance there. And it just popped up for Shaquille Bradford. It was an awkward bounce in the 18-yard box. I, I can't too blame the Treasure Beach defenders that much because they couldn't have expected that bounce. Shaquille Bradford, it caught him by surprise as well, and he headed it wide. But let me tell you, he does get chances and, and miss. Let's have a look at it here. Look here. I, it's I an think, awkward I, bounce. I, well, as a coach, I'd blame, I'd blame both because I feel he needs to attack that one before it bounces. Just get to it, the defender. Before just get bounce. a boot. Yeah, and just, and just try and get height on it, if not distance. Bradford, I think, lost his bearing yeah, because yeah. that was a header that should have gone back across goal not flicking on Treasure Beach edge in possession and I spoke about it earlier alluded to it because they are allowed in their defensive third by Mount Pleasant not a full press a half press so they allow them to have it there I think a lot of that 54 percent of the possession our time with the ball has been in their final in their defensive third Treasure Beach yeah well for most of the time 10 of their 11 players in their own half and they're trying to get forward it's not going to work out though and James does well and oh yeah beautiful from Cummins and now Topi, who is always good with his feet. James wants help, drops the shoulder. Good work. And Bradford trying to get past Nimhard, who does well. Tall center back in Jordan Nimhard. Will take a while for Bradford to get accustomed to the style of play you'd think at Mount Pleasant as well. He does a, a lot, lot of, of creative <laughs> players, yes, probably more than half of you, but the chemistry in terms of the tendencies that Bradford will have, Mount Pleasant players will have to get used to that as the point man. I guess even with Arborview, he would have dropped deep sometimes just to get into the play. I think now he can do his work in and about that penalty box. Yeah, he doesn't box. have to drop deep. No. Cummins, looking for Bailey, who does well to James. James stretching for it. That was quite ambitious. Yeah. If he had gone over the top, I think that's a beauty. Green is offside, yes. That's what the assistant referee has said. Jermaine Easing, very experienced. FIFA assistant referee. And his, he's saying that Daniel Green just went a little bit early. It looked like it would have been a lovely pass from Sule Makala, who is the difference maker so far, a first minute finish. For his third of the season, Sule Makala, two-time Premier League winner with Portmore United. This man has played everywhere, and I can now safely say everywhere for Mount Pleasant, having gone in goal in the last game. Cummins as well again. I really like him as a centre-back. Fitzroy Cummins reads the game so well here at Bradford. Good and turn. They're playing him as, as, as a right-back now. Or three, well, with them playing four, Makala would be more of their left-back. Topi and Dyer. Yeah, yeah, they're not really. If you were to follow the squad list, it's not really, it's not really going according to plan. There's Adil Murray, who is another member of the Mount Pleasant squad. So you talk not in, about not the players out today. We, we, we've spoken about three of them, and, and if we were to go through Murray, a level, we talk about Deacon. Yeah, I think they could play against themselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's just wide in the end. Shaquille Bradford getting into the area, picked up a hit from Holmes. He's a tough character, Shaquille Bradford, and he's very brave. But one thing is for sure, I don't think... Look at this run. This was a good run, you yeah, know, back good from run. him. And good attempt. No, that one, I'm not going to hit him too hard Ooh. for. Yeah, I was stretching for it. was one he of the body. Look. He didn't need to, to look. The goal no, was. because... And, and a good run. Good attempt with that one. The last one, the previous one, I would say. And yeah. Bradford's runs the lines very well, those little diagonal mm -hmm. runs, and is willing to kick with either foot. Right and as in. I said, he will miss opportunities in the box as we stop, take a look stop, at the bench. Stop, yeah, a young looking bench. Rankin <laughs> couldn't hold it. <laughs> Not enjoying the camera on them necessarily. But certainly, a uh, set of players and uh, Gotri, others. There's a tap right by Kaiko as well. Yeah. And Kimani Campbell. 
who had that outstanding season two years ago is Waterhouse at left back Kimani Campbell was probably the second best left back I think in the league behind mm -hmm. and yeah that's Marlon Allen Marlon Allen yeah. in the crowd as well as Shandy James See, beside him so, so put it together said, a decent, decent side here <laughs> and, and we did that have Gawain Austin earlier yes too. yes that's what I was saying the ones he spoke about so I just tell you about the wealth of talent at, at, at Whitmore's disposal. Lyman, I think they should help out. They should have helped out Lime their fellow uh, uh, Parishi in terms of giving Lymon a few loans there to try and keep them in the, uh, the Premier League. They, they still would do might well get with some of those names, wouldn't they? Most definitely. Yeah. Well, those three are not in the squad, but they're here to watch the proceedings. Yeah. Hoping their team can repeat the title winning performances. Last time out, Austin, Austin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's still paying attention. Well, maybe he's not watching probably the app at the moment. He's probably getting a call to say your no, name is being called. Like it's the app, and he put the, yeah. the speaker at his ear, ah. so <laughs> not looking. Let's putting it there. So possibly. hearing the names being called, but great to see that the, 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 the academy members, the squad members, here to support the team as well. Not just saying, well, you know, I have a, a week off, so I will do something else. No, nah, most Still often they're part, not playing yeah, their part. And most often they're not. The younger ones are here too, just to lend their support. I, I mean, I know the high school level will be somewhat different, Dwight, but if, if somehow a player is not in the squad, what it, well, you are at school, so it might be different. But let's might just say different. the match is on a Saturday. You do, What's the thinking? Y yeah, the players, you, you, as a coach, you, you look at it too. You, you look if they're going to come out to support the team. It's not mandatory is what you're no, saying not the mandatory. No, not mandatory, but no. But certainly you'd want to see them come out because it shows that, yeah, it's, it's more about the team than yourself. Disappointed not to be in it, yes, but you're supporting your team. Daniel Green. Now 26 years of age, Daniel Green has scored, what, some 26 goals in the Jamaica Premier League in his career. He's gotten to over 100 games in the Jamaica Premier League now, Daniel Green. So even though he's just 26 years of age, quite a bit of experience. It's a good cutout from Topi, you know. Chedrovich was looking to make advances. They're just going to have to stay in it. And so far, so good not to concede since that it could have been bad for them. But they have pretty much regained their shape, given up a few chances still. But the fact is that in the goal scoring column or the goal scored column, it's still just 1 0 to Mount Pleasant, and the crowd has pretty much gone quiet. Lovely turn there, really lovely turn. Here is Cummins, finds Bailey wide. Yeah, that would be a foul here. Easy call for Shane Nation and almost bailing out the Mount Pleasant team was Treasure Beach on that occasion to give away a foul, a free kick there. Offside yet again. Guilty on a couple of occasions. Mount Pleasant this time Bailey. Surprise no Lorenzo Lewin in the squad today for Treasure Beach. I actually thought he was one of the more expressive players in their squad. Good work rate, a dangerous player when going forward. And I think he'll be a miss because not on the bench as well. A lot of energy as well from him. Yeah. A fighter as well, but indications from some players at the Treasure well. Beach that he's not injured but no and not sure if he's sick here's a chance inside the area and james was looking to deliver to bradford didn't find him but mount pleasant enjoying things at their pace at the moment now 22 goals on the season for mount pleasant 
joint level with Cavalier in terms of goals scored. And third behind Tivoli and Portmore. Mount Pleasant. Yeah, they certainly want to get back amongst the at the top two. Yeah, and a, and a win today, even though they would have played a, a, a game more than Cavalier, a, 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 a win today and they'll be back on top of the table ahead of Portmore. So I guess hence why you suggested that it just might be a, an hour or so <laughs> in yeah. terms of Portmore's reign. Yeah, Portmore reign, yeah, could just be that. The top. But you never know, this Treasure Beach team have created problems. They do have two wins already this season and a draw to go with their 11 losses. Can be a dangerous team and do know how to score. 18 goals in their 14 games. Here's Bailey looking to drive forward. Yeah, the ball just didn't have the pace on it when it came to him. When he tried and put it, just, just draw that one into his path. Didn't roll away and uh, just didn't come to him in time. Was reaching for it somewhat. I mean, McCullough is popping up all over the park. He's playing at the two minutes at left back. He, he made that run from a diagonal run that see him ending up on the right side. Nice turn from Green. Now to Dyer. Hasn't really been involved much. Dyer. Now Bailey. Asking Cummins to get on down the right hand side. Not a natural wing back. Cummins, but a nice delivery. And Holmes. Did he tip it on its way? Probably did. Yeah, it's a corner. Or a throw. Seemed to be a corner. It was hmm. pointing, yeah, pointing for a corner. Four nineties for Mount Pleasant. Taken short. And just totally slowing things down. Now back to Green. Green, nice trajectory, good delivery, Green. And Bradford yet with another attempt. And it's over the top. Love that curl on that ball from Green. Inviting. And Looking for a second assist. Daniel yeah. Green. Bradford. That was nice. Yeah, Bradford took the invitation. Should have done better there. Yeah. Bradford was had got himself away from his markers as he does so well but as I said Bradford creates a lot of opportunities misses quite a few but does still find ways to score as they would say he takes a lot of he needs a lot of chance to score yeah but he continues to make the run he will not shy away here again battling hard and committing the foul In the 28th minute, and Mount Pleasant still lead by a goal to nil, scored by Sule Makala in the first minute of play. As he shields that one out as well. We're in the captain's armband, of course, Sule Makala. Bailey did get injured and was out for a while. Kimoni Bailey coming back into this starting lineup has had a good season. Has looked better in a Mount Pleasant shirt, more consistent, I would say, in terms of his play than when he was at Dumbo Holding. I got more time as I, I, I saw a lot of Dumbo Holding was used a lot too as a substitute after like a, a while. Changer. But I think, I think initially Kimoni Bailey was actually in the starting lineup quite a yeah. bit at Dumbo Holding, but then. Inconsistent fell down the puck, picking yeah, other, yeah, but I think he has found his foot in here and has found a, a couple of goals or four, four goals, goals so far. Season. In fact, his first three goals made an highlight reel of goals of the season. Yeah. Scored one year where that was a cross from Dan Devontae Campbell. Scored Oof. four weeks in a row. His yeah. Actually, his last goal came on the 23rd of November. But then he got injured. Injured and after then, that, so then, it's been a, yeah. a bit of a, a scoring drought, nevertheless. Uh, I would say uh, well, the almost two months now since his last goal, but he's found himself fit again and into the lineup. And you thought at first that he was even playing in a position that 
would not necessarily have been one that he might have enjoyed. He was playing actually left back almost or overlapping wing back at the stage and, and did it well for Mount Pleasant. Here he is, Bailey. A couple of man of the match performances as well. Bailey. And executing the tackle there. So Treasure Beach, they have a throw. Struggling at the moment and need to find goals. I wonder what the president has to say about the club or the performance so far. Uh, Janae has found him in the crowd. Let's hear what he has to say, Janae. Thank you, Chris. I am here with Mr. Paul Bernard. Sir, you told me a while ago, well, somebody a while ago behind us said you're under pressure. Yeah. You're definitely feeling that pressure, right? Yeah, I, I would be unfair if I, if I said I'm not under pressure. You lost 10 games, you know what I mean? You're under pressure. And you, you don't want love now, so definitely under some pressure. Well, let's speak about that goal. In the, well, in less than 90 seconds in the game, um, you, you guys conceded. What do you think was the error at that point in the game? But to be to be honest, you know, I, I was blocked by the the stands. I never I never said the goal. But from what little I saw, looked like defense work hard, flat footed. But uh, since that moment, defensively, Treasure Beach has been making somewhat of a small improvement. So we do have some time left in this game. Do you think that there will be any sort of improvement? Sure, sure. I believe we see some great improvement because um, we, we have made some transfers since the transfer window opened and three of such players are on the, on the field there now. Um, and as the game progresses, you'll definitely see some improvement. And no doubt we're leaving here with a point. Well, I see you with the, the Monroe College armband on your hand. Well, you corrected me and said the Monroe College. So you know a thing or two about football. What are the plans that you have for Treasure Beach Football Club going on for the rest of the season? Well, as you know, we're a young club. It's the first season in the Premier League. It's 43 years. There's not a side from Sensibet made it thus far. So we, we have a good structure there. We've been making some improvement in the management sector still. But um, trust me, we, we're making great strides and we twinning with this with the Monroe College and sets and the BB Cooks and the Newell and all the schools around to form a youth program. And as we can see, I know that on the table you guys are in the relegation zone. Do you think that Treasure Beach in, in weeks to come will come out of that and start to climb the table? Sure. As I said, we, we make use of the transfer windows yes. and come next week. Trust me, Portmore will feel the assault. Yeah? <laughs> well, you heard it from the president of Treasure Beach Football Club. We'll see what happens next week and we'll also see what happens for the rest of this game. Stay tuned. Back to you, Chris and Dwight. Beautiful, Jenny. And yep, for a man who didn't see the goal, I think his assessment was pretty good, Dwight, that the defence was caught flat-footed and there was no <laughs> reaction to the Sule Makala advancement of play. <laughs> so flat they were, flat-footed, that he probably just had a look back to see they're still static the way they were, so probably just be able to say <laughs> <City> that. <ducks. laughs> but yeah, um, and he's honest, he's honest. 43 um, years since we have seen a St. Elizabeth club in the Premier League. He's proud of that, mm -hmm. um, that they're the ones back um, flying the flags of St. Elizabeth, but he'll definitely want to stay there. Not sure that all those persons are from St. Elizabeth. I saw some from Trelawney as well and, <laughs> and, and the parish of St. Anne. But great to see all and sundry coming out to support the Premier League, no matter your location or parish of origin. Yeah, it's, it's, I tell you, that's something I've, I've been pleased with since the opening day of the Premier League here. The turnout has been good consistently. Um, I've seen it much more jam-packed than this, but always a good turnout. And I think it rivals anywhere in Jamaica now that the Premier League is played in terms of making a statement that they support it the most here in terms of fans turning out. Yeah, of course, our, the, 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 the parish of St. Anne, big in terms of tourism. A, a lot of overseas persons would have known of Ocho Rios, which is just about five to ten minutes yeah. away from here. And so you will see tourists as well coming in. We've seen quite a few of them yeah. in the stands yeah. already. Some of even purchased the Mount Pleasant shirts and <laughs> yeah, for sure, are, are spending time. So th that's 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 wonderful to see. And as as you said, football in Jamaica grows. That is a part that will help it to grow. The, the more attention it gets from overseas, the overseas market and yeah, 
and because we've had other Caribbean players come coming play in here. Nathaniel James here from Trinidad and Tobago. And, and I've heard a couple of them do the interview, and they 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 used to back teams here yes. before coming in. Melvin Doxley is on the bench. He's yeah. a Saint Lucian mm -hmm. national. So, you know, a lot of a lot of that taking place as well. Good to see uh, for the growth of, of of football locally. Well, Mount Pleasant, they are the first team from St. Anne to win a Premier League. Defending champions and looking to make it 2-2 two two this season. And well, not so sure if that was the best <laughs> defensive work there coming in from Romario O'Brien. Slipping and sliding and he's giving away a corner. Shaquille Bradford, apart from the goal, by Suley McCullough had the best of the attempts so far. Not quite been on target as he looks for his first goal in a Mount Pleasant kit. I'm not sure who is blowing that on, but it sounds a bit depressing, so I'm wondering if it is a Trisha Beach fan. <laughs> Because <laughs> that it would sounds melancholy. That would that would <laughs> help them now. They need some <laughs> cheering sounds to get them going. Yeah, I'm not so sure if that's the, if, if that's a harmony we are hearing <laughs> or the blues. <laughs> More like the blues. <laughs> Moon Howell with a flick forward. And a lot of aerial play. But to fear to, to Treasure Beach, yes, they haven't really tested Mount Pleasant, but Mount Pleasant has not really reined in the chances. I've been peppering the goal. No one. Maybe that's maybe that's what you were hearing there, Chris. Yeah, uh, it, with, the, with the sound. Well, you, you stop playing that, no one. I think the the powers above kind of heard that, and so the sun is out to brighten back <laughs> things. Here at the Jackson Sports Complex, the sun has been in and out. It must be said, and so too has been Mount Pleasant. They've mm. been pretty much one minute they have a pitchy patchy, a, yeah, a spell of possession, and then it goes. And it's been just kind of easy for them, as you said. Look at look at how how much time they have on the ball. They all eleven players of Treasure Beach in their own half for the most part, and. I think Not would have really. come here to play this way, Treasure Beach, and the goal didn't change that. And, and it shouldn't, too. I, I can support them on that, the fact that it's only one goal. But look you at the play. The, the ball is almost at a standstill. There's no, there's no serious pressure, no pressure on the, on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, as you said, they're the ones who actually need it. They trail. They trail. But I think the plan is that, you know, he'll stay in the game as long as possible. And then Trans towards the latter something. stage, yeah, he, he knows he doesn't have the team to go and score two or three or three goals, so he wants to keep it as close as possible. Well, and the president did say he's leaving with a point. Yeah, so, so that so you means see his what ambitions saying. to win so it are just And not that quite plays into what we're seeing out yeah. there. Maybe he's privy to uh, that. Maybe it's more like a school system where you have to turn in your lesson plan. So maybe Coach Wedderburn had to show that. Well, I guess they'll be hoping that Mount Pleasant don't score again, the president, because then he'll have to <laughs> score more than one goal. <laughs> yeah. Here they are, looking to build an attack of their own. It's now with one of those players that was brought in, in Stone, Kadim Stone. They're number 11. They play for Reno, as we said, and New Holland FC, so does have the exp some experience at the level. I would think their most experienced signing is their, is their centre-back in Delano Anderson, their number two, who's 30 years of age now and has played for quite a few clubs at the Premier League level. has been around a long time, Anderson. He was looking for experience. There is Anderson, 30 years of age now. And you look at him, he's played for Humble Lion, played for Vere United, as well as Sporting Central. And a short stint at, at, at Cavalier, but hasn't played any Premier League football since 2019. So he's been out of the mix for a while. And now at 30 years of age, trying to make a difference for this Treasure Beach team. Yeah, that's 
a, a good call from goalkeeper there. He could have heard him from here. Here's Russell. Anderson again with the clearance. And apart from Clare Cavalier, you look at the teams he supported, all from Clarendon, which is more or less where he's been located. But that's his hometown. Anderson, yeah. So, Humble Lion, Veer United, and Sporting Central, who are no more themselves at this level. Took the short trip across to Kingston for Cavalier, just. Mm. And a, a stint it was, uh, literally four months. <laughs> But anyhow, as you said, it, it's not as if players will be flocking to go to Treasure Beach who are a new team in St. Elizabeth as well. And Treasure Beach, not the closest location, very south. Yes, in terms I of think most of those who would go, young players would want to go there because they feel the team is young players, struggling yeah. and then they'd get game time. But Coach so Mark would is want. not really something you'd expect no, to go there. Not in other ways. He has had to opt for people with experience, but not necessarily... As you said, Mark, he yeah. signed it. Yeah. Of yeah, course, the other player who they have signed is Xavier Lamont, yeah. who is the other player with, with Premier League experience. He actually played at Mal for Malines, the Lamont. Yeah, yellow card being shown by Nation for the tug back here. We have a look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was too blatant from Brian. Second player now from Treasure Beach to be booked along with Hall. But it's not one of those games where you'd say, as we see, James, well, Green no, it's here. actually Green. Good. Yeah? Yeah, good skill from Green. Cutting into the area. Daniel Green looking for the pass as well. It wasn't a good pass. I think Phillips was alone. Needed to just a slight cut back to Phillips. Went for the aerial pass. Was looking for Bradford. And couldn't beat the defender. But Green, very willing to play provider as well. Again, it's too easy for Mount Pleasant, but with just one goal in it, anything can happen. And even though you say that, Chris, and, and it games, football is game is a game of moments. We haven't seen that moment yet from Treasure Beach that would say, you know what, they could live to pay for this lack of endeavour, Mount Pleasant, to go and look for the second or, or third goal. Uh, Treasure Beach just not offering enough here in the attacking third. In fact, it keeps breaking down once it me reaches the the middle third I was about to say to you why not go after it put the game to bed and then you can make some substitutions and I do agree I'm just saying that you know it, we're not seeing it now from from Treasure Beach yeah download the sports match app today from your Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and watch lots of sporting content uh, content on your home of champions Lots of cricket being played. India and England coming up. Test cricket. Australia against the West Indies. Down under. West Indies down. 1-0 and looking to get back into it. It's a real uphill task. A young West Indies team. Catch it on your home of champions. There is Premier League football in Trinidad. There is African Cup of Nations. That's been quite exciting as well. Dwight Jeremiah. No joy for me because Mo Salah has gotten injured playing for Egypt. That makes both of us. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen any joy on Theodore Whitmore's face just now. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but I'm happy because, yeah, 4 0 winners today is Liverpool. Liverpool, so, yeah. yeah, for sure. Lots of, lots of content, though, to watch on the, on the home of champions horse racing, motor racing, field hockey, Carabao Cup, of course, the, e the EFL Championship yeah. is there as well as Champions League football. So, football galore, as well as quite a few of the other disciplines in the sporting arena. Do download it now, the Sportsmas app, and so easy to navigate as well. Dwight Jeremiah was taken in a little bit of Liverpool earlier, and then <laughs> it was a foregoing conclusion, so I can understand. No need to watch further. Yeah. Mount Pleasant with a free kick. Demario Phillips to deliver. Good defending, probably the tallest defender for Treasure Beach in Nemhard. And now the transition is pretty quick. And well, left the ball behind, didn't he? That was a bit disappointing from Thompson. Yeah, Stones was marooning down the middle. Just needed that pass into his path just from outside in. Did a lot of work there to get forward, but then just gave it away, Thompson. 
Well, Bailey was looking to free Green on the far side, but the pass was too central, and there was a lot of space to execute it. And there is Thompson. Yeah, just really didn't have the quality in the end. And it was in those rare moments when... Well, that's actually... That one was Parchment, actually, who was trying to chase that eventual pass on the right-hand side, but was nowhere close to it. I, I don't know. I was venturing in the pass. That should have gone earlier oh, from there. Number 19, yeah. Yeah, Thompson. Here is Green. I've seen a lot of the ball in the first half. Back to McCullough, into Green. You know, I was trying a, a cheeky header into Bradford, but it didn't work out. It's show to Mount Pleasant. Two minutes expected in terms of stoppages. And Mount Pleasant still with that Sule McCullough goal in the first minute. Lead this contest by a goal to nil. Looking to do the double over Treasure Beach. They did meet on the 21st of December in a rescheduled game. And Mount Pleasant got the better of them by two goals to nil. It was two late goals on that occasion from a Tafori Bygrave and Marlon Allen. This time, nothing late about the goals. No, pretty early. Probably uh, the earliest goal of the season we've seen so far. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, too, I, I know Harbourview, they play there. That's locked at nil all. Umberland, Dumble Holden, that's also nil all. And as you know, earlier, Portmore, they defeated Limal by two goals. So there's not many goals in match week 15 so far. Here's Kimoni Bailey looking to find his fifth of the season. And well done by Ro Ramon Howell, switching it wide to McCullough. McCullough lofty, and that's going to be easy, or should be easy for Holmes. And it is. Just look at that era there, though, there, Dwight. Quite muddy, slipped did Holmes a while ago, and can't be comforting as a keeper not at all and it, it speaks to the earliest that's a save in the first game from Jaheim Williams who made a smart save having to shuffle to his right that was you, you talk about the condition there that even emphasized how good that save was in that first game but when it rains here the surface not good before and even when it rains it gets worse that's one of the things that persons have been saying that uh, you talk about a club being wealthy in, in Mount Pleasant. I don't know what the legal ties are with this venue, but it's one of the venues that they're saying, well, maybe they should have in, they should invest in it a little bit more with the undersurface and getting lights here um, to attract more in terms of persons that Jamaicans, they do like coming up to those night games. And with the resorts here, persons could, tourists could venture as well. Yeah, uh, from a Mount Pleasant perspective, I think there's a lot of work they could do even at this field. Of course, they do have a, a beautiful field up at the academy, which they use specifically for the academy. But I think if, if this is what they have designated as their home ground, then I think further investment needs to go into it uh, to complete both the surface as well as the lighting. O'Shea Nation has seen enough of the first half, and it comes to a close. Mount Pleasant on the back of a Sule McCullough finish in the first minute of play. The captain, Lee Treasure Beach, by a goal to nil. It's been... All their way so far, Mount Pleasant, the defending champions, and Rambo Weatherburn and company will have a lot of things to say in the dressing room and a lot of work to do going into the second half. After 45 minutes, the home team, Mount Pleasant, lead Treasure Beach by a goal to nil. Beautiful skies here on the home of champions, England versus India. We spoke about the cricket. Here it is. First test, day one on Sports Max 2, India versus England. Live on Wednesday at 11 p.m., 12 ECT. And then, as well, 
Australia against the West Indies, the second test, day one on Sportsmax. Live on Wednesday as well. Look out for that. And then the JPL on Sportsmax Plus, tomorrow, live on Monday, Montego Bay United at home against Waterhouse at 7.30 p.m., 8.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. As the Jamaica Premier League match week 15 continues out west at the Catherine Hall Sports Complex. Here at Drax Hall, it's 1-0 between Mount Pleasant, the defending champions, and newly promoted Treasure Beach. Uh, first minute strike from Sule Makala. The difference between these two teams. And yeah, the assist to Daniel Green, who's seen a lot of the ball in the first half. Mount Pleasant in their full blue with white trim in front of their home crowd here. Overcast conditions in the Garden Parish. And maybe why it, it's why that's why it's known for that with its regular rain intervals, helping the greenness to remain in the Garden Parish as Treasure Beach, they line up a change. It's Chris Taylor still here with Dwight Jeremiah. And, and I hear talk about the logics behind it being that. I try to, I tell you what, try, try, try finding the logics behind St. Elizabeth, who is where, which is where Treasure Beach is from, being the breadbasket for Jamaica, and they have a very low rainfall. I can tell you that, very hot in St. Elizabeth, but they're very creative, I would say, in terms of how they do their farming with mulching and all of that. It is very humid. Oh, but yeah, they, they made a change. Paul is off for Trisha Beach. So, yeah, Mount Pleasant going to make a, a couple changes of their own as well. Over it to come on and so to Romeo Guthrie. So Demario Phillips is off. Just 45 minutes for him and Romeo Guthrie, the former the captain of Arnett Gardens, is on. Like for like change. Well, and Kimoni Bailey comes yeah, off and Kale Overy comes on. <laughs> to replace him, number 25. <laughs> So here we go, second half action. Ashane Nation, the man in charge. Treasure Beach looking to get forward. Thompson yet again. And they'll win a corner early. Yeah, I just showed too much of it to McCullough just now as he ran across. He needed to keep that on his right foot, was more towards his left, which was closer to where McCullough was. Having a very right smile there. Romario Smith, the man brought into the lineup now for Treasure Beach. He has two goals to his name. He's the leading goal scorer for Treasure Beach, Romario Smith. They're number 13. Some height about him as well. Can he get on the end of one of these deliveries? Well, that one is much too low to engage his height. Smith and now Mount Pleasant a chance to get away. Ramon Howell. Quite a few former captains in this Mount Pleasant lineup. What a skill. That bit of skill from Overy. And now brings James into it. James back to Overy. Well, that's a good tackle coming in from Smith. Vital from Smith. Really vital from Smith because Arthur looking as if he was going to make his way. I think once he got that out from under his foot, he would have unleashed a shot there diminutive player but certainly looking lively energetic and good give and go and uh, intelligent run as well it's hard to see him in that pile that will be out for another corner just 19 years of age is over it actually born in France Trinidad and Tobago nationality over it. Yeah, it's one of two training the side. Yeah. Was in the youth academy at Lille in France for, for some time and then went across to Kansas City in the US. So quite a few nationalities involved in his development 
over him. <laughs> that is blasted into touch. <laughs> stone again. From stone. And stone. Well. And stone. Now he was has coming. lost it yet again. It that was, was coming. coming. <laughs> and he's now showing the yellow card. I tell you what, he did well to stay out of the referee's book in all of the first 45. And even then, he didn't have to shove Bradford. Just look at it here. Why, why is that necessary? Yeah, it's the second time he did it yeah. close, just beneath the commentary box here. Bradford's just said, and there he is. Just working himself in the box. And you know what? I'm a Mount Pleasant player, then I'm working hard to get this Treasure Beach team down to 10. I mean, I'm going to see his game control, his ability to control himself, because he'll have a lot of decisions to make. Another yellow card. As a coach, I'll tell my player, just target that one. Yeah. Quick fuse, short fuse, stone, and he's getting another talking to from O'Shea Nation. And, well, obviously, stone doesn't want to remain on the path with that kind of behavior. And, maybe and I think Bradford just kind of maybe that wound, it, wound him up as well. There's some activity on the Treasure Beach bench, and that could have been one of the reasons why, because it's best to get him off before he lose it but and he is one of those players with premier league experience that was brought in hasn't played since 2016 though so it's been a while into the area from james and cleared now trying to release that but that can't make it past howell now plays it out to dyer not the smartest play from dyer yeah i thought he was going to fake to go back to russell and then go forward but surprised that he decided to try and play it back I was mentioning to you that there's quite a few former captains as over is away again with Bradford here is Howell the teenager out for play but yeah Shaquille Dyer was the captain of Dumber Holding in that season when they got to the final Ramon Howell former captain of Waterhouse Fitzroy Cummins former captain of Vere United Romeo Guthrie <laughs> former yeah, captain of Arnett Gardens, Gardens. Yeah. So quite a few not short of leadership yeah not short of leadership but no and, imported and none of them are the, cap are the current captain exactly no imported captain <laughs> here is Makala <laughs> yeah who has been around himself, but... Who did, at this time, in Portmore, where the captain's arm at some yes, point? Yes, that's where it's going. But yeah. So, lots of leadership qualities in, in this team. And that has been uh, pretty much, apart from, you know, they've brought in some talents from overseas, but the recruitment at Mount Pleasant had taken a shift early on in their their existence they were looking more for just raw talent and uh they have gone for steely players as well and that we saw that coming out last season where it's not just ball handlers but persons who can grind out results who can really get stuck in clearance again into touch from a treasure beach perspective and as you said, hanging in there, being tough, but not really creating much for themselves. Yeah, the Still entire... Still have a shot. Yeah. Not even a target, a shot. Yeah, a shot. Daniel Russell has had quite an easy day thus far. I think, I guess the recent calculations that they have in gold, goals expectancy would probably be zero. <laughs> it would <laughs> definitely be zero because that is pretty much tied to attempts. Nice pass. Now to Gussery. Gussery over the top to Bradford. Oh, his first touch isn't good, Bradford. And had that first touch been good, he would have been in, especially with his pace, but he just rolled over the ball instead by accident. He was looking to take it in that instep, but... Nothing new there with Bradford. He's always going to be there or there about. Some near misses. Missed chances. But you wouldn't bet against him getting a goal.
Topi. Yeah. Wasted opportunity there, but they get it back, Treasure Beach. Dyer, pass almost short. Second time in a row, Dyer playing a little too close for comfort. Free kick. Now, still not much going on for Mount Pleasant as they try to make further inroads. Nice pass over the top, finds Green. Green was very good in the first half. Sure, what the complaint is from a from a from a Treasure Beach perspective. Saying some head button, he's saying. No, he's saying that there was hands in the face, but is I mean, I'm not sure what he what he expects when he's he's tugging and holding. Look at that. Well, I don't see well. any hand in the face. He's the one with all the. I mean, there was a, 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 a hand at the back, but what but do you expect? You have face. to protect the area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, no surprise there. An angry face from Mario Bryan. just needed to stay calm because the, his back was to goal, Daniel Green. He was facing his own goal. Now you give them a chance. You have to stay 10 yards away, and they can serve the ball in the box. James's deliveries haven't been the best so far. What can he produce here, the 19-year-old? This one is very good towards the area, and Bradford again. I mean, why would he go for a cushion header there? I think that's a bullet header across, just redirecting. There was enough pace on it. There was a nice curl on it as well. And you're facing it as well. It's not like there's no need to glance at the cushion. Let's look at it here. Okay, I think the defender threw him here. off. Look here. The defender jumping just in front of I think that threw him off, you know. Yeah, but he was above the defender. Yeah. And he looked like he was down. above the ball as well. I, I think just, just, just try and head that one in. Yeah. Looking but, for his ninth goal of the season. Bradford. Eight already. We did say seven earlier, but we were shorting him a, go a goal, Bradford. He actually has eight. And not seven. Second to Dunn. And Brian, of course. And, and now Walsh has eight, so he's joined with Walsh. Or Walsh has joined him, I should say, on yeah. eight. Yeah. Seems like it will be a close battle this season for the Golden Boot. It was a two-man race last season with Colin Anderson and Trevante Stewart. Anderson eventually winning with 20. And the year before, it was a, a tie between Daniel Green and a tough hour by Grey. Both now playing for Mount Pleasant. One getting more playing time than the other. Really not happening for Treasure Beach. It's it's just that their, their their play tends to break down right in that middle third as they border on the attacking third. Looking to make some changes. Jay Jameson there getting ready. Just an assist so far this season. Jameson did spend some time at Cavalier. Nice touch from Thompson. Here goes Thompson. Very direct player though, Thompson. He did a little bit more finesse was too I think it was a bit too obvious what he was yeah, trying and, to and, do and with there. And he had support. He had support there with him. Parchment was saying, just give me then and I could give you back. Launched upfield for Bradford, but he's all alone. Oh, that's a nice take. Oh, lovely skill from Smith. O'Shea Nation plays the advantage, but the pass from Smith is too heavy. Yeah, how well got. Well, trim, they would say, but and a pile there got away from him, and then he was looking some reprieve to suggest he got struck. Not that he didn't, but not enough for an infringement. But there's no sign from Nation that he was even playing the advantage. I didn't see any. No, it was from like, him. So yeah, he didn't I, think I, I, there was anything I wonder there. if he was actually going to give, but that was a foul for sure when he flicked the ball over Romeo Gustry's head. Anyhow, Smith is their leading goal scorer, playing in the middle of the park. You can tell that he's just come on because his, his kit is still very clean. Here goes Overy with this skill as well. Nine, another 19-year-old in this Mount Pleasant 11. Born in France, has lived in the U.S. 
of Trinidad and Tobago nationality. Talking about cultural diversity. <laughs> <laughs> and now playing in Jamaica. Here he goes again. Oh, he's, he's really a... Oh, what skill! Oh, inside now. And well, really bringing this crowd alive is a teenager. And very nearly working his way all the way to the goal. What a skillful youngster this 19-year-old is. For a moment there, I thought he ran out of space because it was so tight on that goal line. How did he get himself out there? <laughs> but I think still, I have just, just done Low better with that gravity. final pass. But that was lovely skill. Yeah, low center of gravity, very skillful. But yeah, thought initially he maybe kept it a little bit too long for himself. Yeah, the final there, he just that just needed the, the, the right layoff. And then that would be good work. Now just look at him here. Got away. Defenders got too tight. He rolled them. Showing good strength as well. But just look at this one. This is where it got a bit tight. Just a drop of the shoulder. Defender was made unstable. But just that touch inside was a bit heavy. Maybe a lay back to the top of the box for a shot. Uh, but I think he, he still felt that he didn't have enough control over it. That cutback. But I just a drop of the shoulder. Yeah. And that was enough. To I thought the player at the top of the box, which might have been James, was a little bit too far, though. I think he should have come in a bit more. But he could have made it to him. He was far off. Let, let, maybe James trust himself from distance. Shanoi Smith is brought on. A triple change. There's Jay Jameson in the 20. And Carlton Salmon in the 15. So, yeah. Jay Jameson coming on for Curtin Wright. Wright hardly involved, had a goal already this season, Curtin Wright, but he's not really making an impact for Omar Wedderburn. And their third change in a row. Parchment is off and Salmon is on. Carlton Salmon. Positive change. Salmon a strike, of course. What difference can they make early? Still just a goal in it. The president of the club says they are definitely leaving with a point. And up to the 90 minute, 98 minute, if it stay this way, they will still have hope. Nice take from Bradford. Played wide out, wide out to Green. Green likes to cut in onto the right foot, does that, but the touch is too heavy. And now Smith can free one of the substitutes. This one is Salmon. And well, bigger body from Dyer. Just too easy there. Oh, and gives it away too easily as well. Smith with a strike, and that was ambitious. Heads out towards the corner flag, and will probably just make it for a goal kick. Yeah, but even with that challenge just now, that the substitute got eased off quite quickly. Salmon just had to brace himself for the challenge. Just, you knew it was coming. And yes, bigger body, yes. But if you just get ready for it, it seemed like he was so naive. Felt he was going to be allowed to just run at goal. Now the foul. Free kick to Mount Pleasant. Willing to just take the challenges when necessary and slow the game yet again, get a free kick. They're in full control now, but as you said, very dangerous scoreline. Yeah. And they'd like to find something more. Here's a speed now of Bradford, who does well. Aubrey does a little bit too much now and yeah. gives it away. Gonna have to mix it up a little bit more. Decide when you're far away from goal, just conserve your energy and please a little give and go and get yourself closer. Uh, players like those, you don't you don't want to coach out their skills, but you want to teach them where to you to use it. Skill in football is using the right technique at the right place and at the right time. So it's gonna have to learn a little bit more of that, but certainly has a lot of seems he's a he loves to dribble. But like the great Lionel Messi says, when you're far away from goal, don't waste your energy, okay? Play the one, two. But as you get closer and see where something can open up, you go ahead.
Free kick for Mount Pleasant to be taken by Fitzroy Cummins. Lion is in the house. I was about to ask if you had seen the, the, the mascot today, Dwight Jeremiah, the, the crocodile. Given away from Russell, but no, Topi I, is there to clean things up. I'll ask Jenny because she's the one who's about the police. Mm. Jenny? <laughs> she's away. <laughs> We've got so used to seeing Janine and then hearing a reply on the other end. Well, thank you, Chris. Yeah, or yeah, Dwight. Oh, yeah. Hi, mm -hmm. Dwight or Chris. She's having all the fun when she goes out. She gets yeah. all the hospitalities and stuff like that. You I know? think the crocodile's feelings is hurt that he, she hasn't, um, you know, interviewed. Reached out to, yeah, true, to true. It. Yeah, it's, it's always there, too. Um, she's always seen, once Treasure Beach is about and Sports Max is about, yeah, it's, it's, it's her companion a lot. Bradford was looking for a companion there, but his pass was not accurate enough. And that spoiled the relationship. A lot of work from Green going forward and running back. Yeah, he's had a good game. Good shift, good, e good ethic about him, Daniel Green. And comes from a league in Vietnam where it, it's, yeah, especially their overseas players, it, there's a lot, of, a lot of running, a lot of work. And they expect players to, they're not placed with speed, natural speed Vietnam. So when you play in that league, the expectation is that especially forwards can create for themselves and, and, and show that work. So that would have been good for him from that standpoint. Very efficient league, but not necessarily best with place and, and, and natural goal scorers. Yeah, Avery again there, just... Should he dribble that final pass, not coming off? Just no. Green to Guthrie, and back to Green. Here goes Green. Oh, lovely skill. That's got, oh, and he's on a yellow card, you know. He's going to be off, Brian, for sure. And that was very silly from the number 42. And we just spoke about the fact that he obviously didn't want to stay on the park. Both himself and Stone. Stone, I expected to have gone already, uh, but it is a Brian. Is the man who gets an early shower. He needs it because it's it has been uh, pretty much muddy out there. He's rolled about a bit, but yeah, Green just bamboozled him. Just a simple touch around him, uh, but he just couldn't afford for him to go. And the thing is, was there a covering defender? He would not have known. Just and look yeah, at it here. There, it I, and you know the initial touch from Brown, uh, from from Green. I don't I think, think he no, intended didn't to do that. Intended, it's a bad didn't intend that touch. Well, but you then he got around. You and, but card. I think he's close enough yeah. too to try and recover. I would say, to tr uh, rather than tugging back. He Maybe he might forgot. Not have he but probably forgot. Yeah. No, I'm saying wide. to try and do yeah. that. And sometimes it's just your recovery run is enough to put off Green because he'll just take his his, his eye off the ball a little bit. It may bubble. So you just trust that. I think he probably forgot he was on the yellow. He just instinctively, I think. I think it was just instinctively. And sometimes it's what they do in training. And as coaches, sometimes you tell them, don't do that. They keep doing it. They go into game. They do it in moments like this. And, and, and I've seen that. I've had a player once. He just liked to hold on to players. And I keep saying, don't do it. Because that he did learn and not get a red card. Mm -hmm. But I know it could, could materialize into things like these. Well, Brian didn't learn and he's off. Here's Aubrey towards the near post. Chance off the crossbar. Follow up. And finally cleared. The offside flag was up though. It was Green uh, who got onto the end of that, that cross into the box. The second attempt wouldn't have counted. And yeah, James is going to be off. Aubrey with the delivery. Nice pace behind it. There was a flick on head as well from Daniel Green. Just look at it here. Green with a flick on head. It might have come off the shoulder of one of the Treasure Beach defenders as well. And then the, the second attempt was in an offside position. James is off. And on now is Dwight Merrick. Merrick with a goal already this season. Former Jamaica College wide player Dwight Merrick. been at Mount Pleasant now a, a couple of seasons and comes on to see what he can do. So 
on a goal and down a player. Treasure Beach and my lines. It's probably the team they're up happiest looking at this one because they are just 11 points. Yep, down to 10 men. Just about 22 minutes to go. And you can see a Tafari Bygrave as well warming up and a Kwasa Chong. So no surprise if Mount Pleasant in short order decide to look the insurance take off uh, take off Bradford and 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 Green probably and Bradford has had his chances Green oh, has sure. had a decent shift and just a rotation of the squad as you said they mm -hmm. wouldn't be losing a lot of quality yeah just inform the viewers as well our view and Verde ended nil all so did Umberland and Umberlands and Dumber Holden wow Okay, so opportunity missed there for Tumbo Holden, who against a, 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 well, I guess somewhat of a struggling humble lion. Mm -hmm. Might have been looking to come off with some points of Tumbo Holden sitting in sixth position with Waterhouse hot on their tail. Yeah, Waterhouse, they play tomorrow against Montego Bay United. And Malines, who we say would be happy um, and with this result. With and they would be playing on it tomorrow. So. They are 11 points. This is Waterhouse. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying Waterhouse. Yes, they play Mobe tomorrow. But Malines, who is just above the drop zone, uh, they play tomorrow as well. Stone. Gates on it. Stone is off. Yeah, and Stewart is on. So that yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're going to make the same mistake <laughs> twice. Yeah, on a yellow card there, yeah. And Stone was, yeah, was, was, looked like, was looking like as if he was going to get the uh, second yellow any time soon. So he has been removed. But yeah, you're seeing the other result. Fair United drawing with. Yeah, Fair drawing with Harbourview. Harbourview. Mm. Mm. Fair United who are in ninth. Harbourview were in eleventh. So Harbourview edging away. So okay, yeah, but an opportunity missed again for Harbourview because they're on 15 points. So a point they stay in the same position behind Humble Lion. Three points would have carried them above Humble Lion and Fair. I guess with the loss of, of Bradford, you, you, you expected them to, to struggle to find the goals. Yeah. At least they kept a clean sheet. And they are united with, with that point. Goes above Mobe into eighth position, at least for now. So they move up a spot, Veer, with obviously playing a game more than Mobe, yeah. who play tomorrow. Against what else? Right. It's just not improving for uh, the two teams at the bottom. And, and so for, peop for, for, for Malines and Arborview, they know each time a point seems so big because these teams are not getting points. getting points. So, Well, Treasure Beach, still just a goal in it. Anything can happen. Still have 20 minutes or so. Merrick over the top, finds green. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was clear. Nation was well. He had a clear view at it, off it. So says handball. Daniel Green says it came off the shoulder. I must have say initially it looked as if it was the shoulder, but anyhow, no excuses from Green. I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure that Merrick needed to play the pass like that for it to bobble in front of Green. But that was a great chance for an overlapping run, a fast break lost from more pleasant. Sometimes, as you said, it's little things in games. Yeah. It's those little things. But the game, they say, is a game of mistakes. That's how we get goals a lot of times. Sometimes we have some moments of brilliance. Uh, we just have some moments as well, and Treasure Beach is just waiting for that moment. Still some 17 or so minutes to go, so still time. But it's just that we haven't seen anything yet to suggest that they can create that moment and sometimes though the moment is created by the the opposition by them making a, a big mistake and just giving you gifting you something question is if Mount Pleasant were to serve up a gift could Treasure Beach unwrap it Passing it around is Mount Pleasant. 
Here's Dwight Merrick just coming on, so obviously full of energy, as you can imagine. Being patient about it. Now it's with Gustry. Merrick. Gustry. One two play with himself and Merrick. Now looking to free Bradford. And Trisha Beach a, a chance to clear, not making any effort to chase the ball though. And they are the trailing team and a man down as well. Dyer utilizing the space. And again, Dyer makes that mistake. Just a little bit too complacent on the ball. Not been the first time today, Dyer. Had a chance for a, a quick break there at Treasure Beach, but just afforded Mount Pleasant the opportunity to get into their defensive organiz organized shape. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised now if Mount Pleasant up for a, a, a pair, two pairs of, of, of fresh legs. Just to, I think Bradford, even though he's putting a shift and, and green, they might be a bit tired. Maybe some quick, quick, fresh legs to get well, that second goal for them. We see two proven goal scorers at this level looking to come forward. Of a Chung. Well, they're too expected then. <laughs> Bradford, offside. For sure and yeah I, I would think it's going to be Bradford and green. it's going to be Bradford and green to come off let's see by grave and Chung Chung in the shortened season of 2021 was joint leading goal scorer with six goals both himself and Bradford had six in a 10 game season and in the season following that it was by grave and green all Mount Pleasant combinations. Oh, that's a reckless challenge. If ever there was one, Jamoe Topi. Clumsy, it must be said. Yep. And he's come of the worst. Don't know if that will influence the two substitutions to be made if he's not going to be able to continue. Yeah, kicked in the Achilles. That could have been painful for Jameson. Well, it his is. boot as well. <laughs> Topi behaving as if he's worst <laughs> off, but yeah. yeah. He gets and up to the yellow, the yellow card. Didn't get away from that. Good decision from O'Shea Nation. Yeah. Not going to be fooled by him rolling about grimacing. Well, the sun has completely left us. Those dark clouds, they make their belated entrance. Yeah, quite overcast and quite windy as well. It's actually pretty pleasant in terms of the weather. Yes, it is, it is. Um, and, and I think they, it might not be long before there may even be a, a slight drizzle. Who knows? In the evening. But there is a slight drizzle now. Mm. Oh, you are feeling some. Oh, yes, there is. But yeah getting quite overcast treasure beach have a free kick it will be a lot brighter for them if they can convert this opportunity into the area and topi clears thompson jameson into the area not bad but topi is there and now Howell with the opportunity to clear. Machine Nation stops the yeah. plague. So it was the ball is soft. Yeah, the pressure was wrong. And now Mount Pleasant will have the chance to make their changes. Daniel Green putting in a good shift. Not able to add to his three goals of the season, but did add an assist for the Sule Makala goal. Chong comes on for him. And of course, a Chong who Bradford has a few goals already closer. this season. He's expecting his number to come up next. Yeah, of course, a Chong has four goals so far this season. Most in the early part of it. And Shaquille Bradford doesn't add to his eight for the season. His first start for Mount Pleasant. And a on comes Tafoy Bygrave, whose only goal for the season was a penalty. 
in the 2 0 win against this same Treasure Beach side on the 21st of December. Not getting a lot of minutes nowadays, Tafroy by Grieve. It's kind of falling down the, the picking order at Mount Pleasant. You kind of wonder if he's the kind of player that teams would be interested in in the transfer window because he's well the last two years he's been in really good form the national call up time in vietnam mm -hmm. leading goal scorer two seasons ago just not the kind of player you'd have expected to see on the bench yeah and so you wonder if teams who are now struggling in terms of goal scoring and who are looking forward might be interested in a player like a tough or a by grief yeah you think you get the feeling they would be whether he well. would be interested in leaving here well that's um, another <laughs> because he seems to be one of those type of players you know you have some of those players at times who are willing to play that supporting role not a problem to be on the bench and but he's just coming off the best part of his career yeah. mm -hmm. so you would think he would want to play it's not as if he was a player that was struggling this is a no player was a, not was at all finally got to the heights of his career for long periods wasn't paid any attention but you get then the feeling that he became relevant when you come to a Mount Pleasant and you're you're here to move you'd probably want to have your wages matched and I don't know what he's on matched yes matched yeah. well at least that's another story <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of those some of the teams i can see in the premier league especially look at you look at even a you was who has now lost bradford they, what yeah, are yeah. they looking to do up front they have quite a few teams struggling in terms of goal scoring and as i said maybe it would be worth getting in some of those wages for a striker like bradford well chong a striker in his own right who has been at top of you yeah has and been a top of you don't necessarily think chong is an out and out striker though but because he is a good kicker of the ball with either right or left given the opportunities he will score but i actually think he does best slightly behind the striker uh, yeah, yeah that was a tough challenge there have been some interests i think from harbour view where he's concerned but no surprise that's um a yellow card to somewhere Thompson. he knows yeah confirmation of the card another player booked for treasure beach they're already down to 10 players and they have to defend a free kick in a promising position the last one was a good delivery from over it what can he produce this time i think it will be him again towards the near post this one not as good can't beat the first defender and Gusry all the way back now to russell and despite they're chasing this one just 10 minutes to go because they're down a player too they can't just go and press good pace here this one is from Con Co Cummins nice ball into the area not a natural overlapping back is Cummins and he's been very impressive today you know yes, Cummins, not yes. only in the Happy wide area but when he's coming to the central he has not lost a duel so far Fitzroy Cummins and he definitely would have been on that short list as well in yeah. fact he's probably been the most impressive Cummins yeah himself and the fact as I said McCullough started on fire taper off somewhat yeah hasn't really been called but Cummins in, mm -hmm. in a lot of anything that Treasure Beach have tried to get forward well they are now through chance to score and wow it's put wide what a chance and Shaquille Dyer looked like he was out of position initially I'm not sure how that got through Ramon Howell has a lot to say and so too Russell and I tell you that's what I was talking about the moments and this is the moment in the game. Just look, we would like to take it back a bit. It's a misspaced pass. And what right. a chance that was yeah, for a Carlton Salmon. It was Salmon. a misplaced pass looking, that got there. Looking for his first season. Look at Dyer here. It's Dyer. That, that, he's got to do better there. Yeah, he's high Dyer. up. But it happened further up the park. And that's why we're saying... It, it sometimes it's just the opponent that gives you that chance whether or not treasure beach could unwrap it i was asking they proved there that they couldn't uh, not sure they're going to get another one before this game is out there's not a lot of time but there you see that's the that's the the nature of leading by a goal to nail it it's such a, a slender fragile lead and i think that's why by grave and chung has been brought on to try and get the insurance well, much to the dismay of Omar Wed Wedderburn. Salmon, who was brought on as a substitute, just unable to put that on the right side of the post. Agonizingly wide. 
after Daniel Russell for the first time this afternoon was exposed. Huge chance, and you don't even know if 10 man Treasure Beach are going to get another. Yeah, certainly, that was their way back into this one. Here goes Chong, allowed it to run, has enough pace to keep it in. Tries to be cheeky on the line and doesn't get away with it. Yeah, I didn't do a drop of the shoulder. It was too clear. Pass forward from Stewart. But just nobody to aim at. Here goes Salmon yet again, and he's bounced off the ball from Dyer. Shoulder to shoulder. I'm not sure what he was looking for, but he's never going to win a penalty there. Goal kick for Mount Pleasant. Just rattled a little bit by that opportunity moments ago for Treasure Beach. Yeah. So the Sports Max up moment brought to you by the Sports Max up. And it's this moment here, the goal in the first minute. A Daniel Green delivery. And a Sule Makala finish. Signed, sealed, and delivered by Mount Pleasant's captain. His third of the season and a dream start for Mount Pleasant. The first max up moment. Glee on the face of Sule Makala, and why not? The quickest goal we've seen this season. And yeah, the difference so far, still just that one goal in it. Will it remain, or will Treasure Beach have? A special delivery of their own. <laughs> if it's delivered to you and you can't unwrap it, you're going to have to deliver it and unwrap it. That makes <laughs> for more work. I just don't see them doing it, no. Corner for Mount Pleasant, five minutes to go. Makala with the challenge. a player down for Trisha Beach pointing to his left thigh lots of fans here they will be a bit on edge considering there's just one goal in it most of them Mount Pleasant fans and not even five minutes ago they saw a really good opportunity come for Trisha Beach which he has not been pleased there uh, Topi especially with Kwasa Chung was in an argument with him just now about his work rate and tracking back. I guess if Chang were to get on the end of this and score, he'll be the first to go and congratulate him. Well, Aubrey will be the deliver again. Well, he takes it short to Merrick. Merrick into the area, not a bad delivery, chance. Topi and himself. Topi. Yeah. <laughs> Over the bar. Pretty good with his feet for a tall man. Jamoy Topi has always been. From schoolboy days at Holy Trinity. Broken up by Dyer. Nice touch there from Guthrie to Aubrey. Just to dribble himself. Off he goes, Aubrey. Delivery's not quite there, though. I think he'll get there, though. A little He's bit too shallow. It, but yeah. Here is Mary. Nice pass to Guthrie. Guthrie looking for Bygrave, who gave him the run, but the pass was too central. And now Treasure Beach. He's going to be offside, yeah. That's an easy call for Jermaine Easing didn't need to go that early it was clear he wasn't under pressure there was outside the defenders were ball watching it was pretty much he was on their blind side could have just hold his run out on salmon yet again who had that glorious opportunity yeah. eager to make amends now here's mccall on the overlap well you know, Macala, he just didn't he doesn't have that space too late i think chong just gave him a, too much to do Chong just overcooking that pass. Nice 
nice pass. Go through with a lot of space. Looks to play Aubrey, but it was almost teasing him was the Treasure Beach defense. And he fell for it. Here's Bygrave. Bygrave does well. Finds Chong. Chong with a chance. Aquasa Chong can't finish. Can Bygrave? No. And Nemhard able to clear. Well, good work initially by a tough boy Bygrave to battle and play in Chong. I'm wondering if he could have gone for the head of the second chance. Aquasa Chong opened his body well to yeah. place it into the yeah. far corner. So I like that from him. Just look at it here. Bygrave does well. Plays in Chong. His first touch is good, opens up his I body. He's stretching he, a little yeah, bit there. He, he is the other on there from, 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 from Bygrave, I'm saying. It hung in the air for a while. He's just waiting for it to come down. Probably could have attacked that one. I, I think he was worried that, especially with how the legs were coming in. And then but with a lack of pace, could he have generated enough pace with the header? Yeah, but he was so close to goal. There, there was no need. I mean, his neck muscles should be able to do that from that <laughs> distance. That's what you do. You train, you, you go back, you swing that, and you get it on goal. I think... Yeah, he could have attacked it. I don't think I would have gone with the head there either. I think I, I think tell I you what, it for had I had foot. Young there, he would have gone for that yeah. one. Young from Portmore. Maybe. Yeah. But I think the lack of pace on it might have deterred him. Anyhow, Merrick with the corner. It's high, it's loopy, it's topy, and it's, well, it's the you know, it was the same number as Stephen Young, but it's Victoria <laughs> Cummins instead. <laughs> not, not the same. Um, approach to it with the other no. as Young would have, although he does miss a few Young. Over the bar. But concern still for him not being able to finish this game yeah. off. Yeah, good from Fitzroy Cummins to get into the back post, but just got under the ball in the end. One of the better players on the park. Oh, for sure. As you said, they have had their chances, not converting. Here goes Chong again. Well, the assistant referee almost looked like he was going to flag, then didn't. Well, and Chong can't get past. The defense. The fourth official has indicated four minutes, so that's what Treasure Beach has left to try and salvage something from this one. Who is your man of the match, Dwight Jeremiah? It is that time of the game. Here is Gustry. Green was good, he's since vacated. So too, McCullough started well. Oh, nice move from Merrick and then waits on the defender to recover. I'm not sure why. Out to Aubrey. Aubrey, nice delivery. It's time to buy Graham. Now to Chong. Gustry and it's blocked. Good defensive work by Treasure Beach on that occasion. So few half chances. Chong with a couple, so too by Grave. But the Treasure Beach defense line has stood firm. Yeah, Green for sure has, has had a, a good game. Uh, assist as well, he's now off. And McCullough did score the goal. I, I just like Cummins, though. I just think Cummins, probably all around the park, has been very solid in the wide areas. Cummins, defensive shift breaks up a lot of play here he goes again even willing to get ahead on the far post yeah adventurous as well so I have no issues with that so for you it would be between but it, it's Cummins or McCullough you're yeah, saying yeah. I think Green was excellent as well I said those, it's those three. So it's, it really comes down to those two yeah and I think here goes Merrick keeps it in done well done from Merrick into Chong Chong with a boot well Kicks nothing but air, does a tough eye by Grave. The ball was slightly behind him, but doesn't make contact. Was it really behind him, though? You've seen him score those before. Yeah, we have. Here they go again. McCullough. Chang. Oh, that's a wasted pass from Akwasa Chang. Here goes Salmon again. Salmon, not showing the greatest of skills here, Salmon, and turns it over to Daya. Howell across to Cummins. Looks to drive forward yet again. Now finds Aubrey, who certainly has the quicker feet. Yep. And has space to do his favorite thing, which is dribble. Here he goes. Lots of trickery. <laughs> Loves to <laughs> drop the shoulder. Now across to Merrick. And lots of space. Merrick can take his time as well. Not sure why he chooses to wait on the defender. He likes to do that a lot, doesn't he, Dwight? Yeah. It's almost like he doesn't enjoy space. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Jones loves to take them on. Cummins with the skill to flick Measured it over. him well. <laughs> <laughs> McCullough. He is a man who has the goal. Over the top from Howell, not the accurate pass that he was hoping. Bygrave. He says Bygrave commits a foul. I'm a bit surprised at that call. Is that Thompson who is down? Yeah, it's Thompson. Wins the free kick. And again, Treasure Beach have battled. They haven't really produced much going forward, but they had the chance that to draw them. That, that one, one moment. moment, which and is and what Omar Wedderborn was hoping for, and the president. By and the I way. was saying it as well that the game is played in moments, and sometimes gifted that, to you just that one. Just and one I think moment. it came about two minutes after we were saying, could they unwrap it if they were given the gift? But well, here's another moment for Mount Pleasant. Space here for Offrey. It takes long to do, and when he strikes, on target but saved. And that's it. So, O'Shea Nation blows his whistle. The home team have got the job done. It was a hard battle. They got the goal early. And they secured three points. Tapa Whitmore's team. That man, Salmon, had the glorious opportunity to draw level. Couldn't take it. Found the wrong, wrong side of the upright. And Mount Pleasant get the job done. They go top of the table now. They overtake Portmore into pole position on 32 points. Big win for them. The win was not pretty, but it was efficient. And it was effective. And more frustration for Mar Rambo Wedderburn. He has brought in new players into his squad. Three of them were in the starting lineup with Premier League experience. And even though they made the task hard for Mount Pleasant, they still leave without a point. After 90 minutes, it's Mount Pleasant 1, Treasure Beach nil. Experienced officiating team led by O'Shea Nation, the man with the whistle. And Mount Pleasant started the game the best way they could, by scoring. Their 22nd goal of the season, and Sule McCullough had his third. Daniel Green picking up the assist. And McCullough with a smart flick with the right boot. The captain, pass home, pass Holmes, who could do nothing about it. Mount Pleasant with a beautiful start and setting the pace early. Had other opportunities. Shaquille Bradford had quite a few of them. Half chances as he always does, Bradford. But was unable to add to his eight goals. That was a strike with the left foot wide of the target. Then Green putting that one in, and a Ken Bradford, as you could see, half chance, heading over the top, always willing to try. Then Treasure Beach, they were reduced to 10 men. A silly foul from Romario Bryan in the second half, and he saw yellow for the second time. A smile on his face, but yeah, a bit irresponsible from him. Treasure Beach had to do it with 10, and that they did in terms of staying in the game. Daniel Green did hit the crossbar from a glancing header. And that's the closest they came. Then this was a moment for Treasure Beach to draw level and just couldn't take it. Comfortably wide in the end from Carlton Salmon. And Daniel Russell, a lot to say, quite annoyed with his defence line. Luckily for him, Salmon was inaccurate. And Treasure Beach, the chance was gone. Of course, a chunk came on as a substitute. So to a tough boy by Grave. And they combined on a couple of occasions but couldn't find the net. As Treasure Beach continued to be stubborn, Fitzroy Cummins, the man of the match with the head over the top. He was solid right throughout the game, was Cummins. And then Chung again, combining Gosri. And blocked again, Treasure Beach, standing firm, but yet unable to create any real opportunities of their going in. Aubrey had this strike, which was on target and safe from Holmes. And that was all she wrote for battery 15 for these two teams. Mount Pleasant 1, Treasure Beach nil. Three on target from 10 attempts for Mount Pleasant. They weren't at their best in terms of finishing, but they got the job done. Nothing on target recorded for Treasure Beach over 90 minutes. That was disappointing for Mar Wedderburn and company. There were some 27 fouls between the two and six yellow cards shown from a Shane Nation. 
Treasure Beach, the more indisciplined of the two and losing a player as well. Two saves were made by Carlisle Holmes between the sticks, but he couldn't stop the important goal for Mount Pleasant who had majority of the possession at 60%. And the lone goal in this contest. Three big points for Mount Pleasant. They win this one by a goal to nil. Dwight Jeremiah's with our man of the match. None other than Fitzroy Simpson. Yes, Cummins, um, you had a decent game today. Um, the rest of your team up front, though, what do you make of their performance? I mean, we go back to the training ground again, you know. We take it from there, you know. We just have to kind of up by the top and put our chances away. It seems like it's you don't get flustered. I see other defenders around you and they have arguments with the players above that are in front of them not doing what they're supposed to do, maybe tracking back or finishing off a chance. You just go about your business. Is, is, is that a nature of how you play normally, just not bothered? You just deal with what you have to do? I mean, not necessarily, but again, we have to go again. I mean, they put the work up there. I have to just stay behind and defend for them as well. So at the end of the day, I mean, they have to go and they have to come back and defend as well. It, it, it would appear that it, it wasn't Treasure Beach that made the game difficult for Mount Pleasant today. It was more Mount Pleasant making it difficult for themselves. I mean, again, we we'll just go back to the training ground and take it from there and go back to the drawing board. And well, good performance from you today. Thank you so much. And I hope it continues. Thank right. you. Yeah, Thank good you. work. So, Mount Pleasant walking away with all three points. Uh, Cummins with the man of the match performance. Really good performance from him, both in attack and defense he, he went about his business even though things weren't clicking today um you knew it was always going to be difficult coming to mount pleasant to play um, not having a lot of the ball that was fine but what was more disappointing for you the goal you know the way all the goals score honestly and um the chance that we got you know it was so close but yet so far you know as i say in the in the, the post interview you know we, we shop and we have numbers so we actually can can stand up and we um, stand up to any pressure in our sense. But that first goal there, I tell you, you know, so it's the first goal that get we done and then um, our chance that we miss. But however, still we are here and as I say, we don't get that jail. We have to try to force everything right now to go forward because our back is against the wall. No time to really even smile right now. So we always have to just try to dig it, dig it, dig it each game we go. Yeah, it could get more difficult for you tomorrow when Malines play if they, if they extend the lead out, out, above the drop zone. But you talk about us would figure out the changes you've made. It's, it's almost as if the team didn't figure it out today for you. Well, as I said, changes in our talking about players that come in. You understand? Because as you can see, it's a much bigger group. And uh, I sure see some, some not familiar faces today, you know. So we are just here, we are, we are working hard at, at training to really get it right, you know. But we just need a goal. And remember, any time we score first, we're not going to lose. Uh, that is the biggest thing when I get off our back right as now. You, as you talk about that, that has been key for you, not being able to go ahead with a lead. Any of your acquisition or your hiring someone to come in to really get you the goals? Well, we are, we, are, we are in the process right now, to be honest. It's not finished as yet, but we are in that process. You don't want to give a name? Not, no. Okay. Well, Coach, let's hope you get what you want and be able to fight even more. All the best. All right, Jerry. Big All up right. every time. Yeah, Coach Whitmore, um, you got the win. But it seemed as if Mount Pleasant was the biggest opponent for themselves today? Well, yes, um, I think after we went up early in the game, I think um, complacency, we didn't have the, the killer instinct, especially in the, the final third. I think we we could exercise a bit more patience in, 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 in going forward, but um, nonetheless, it's three points. The change in bringing off uh, Phillips and, and Bailey, was it that they were the main culprits, not giving you what you wanted? No, not, not necessarily, you know, but uh, we, we need players to play. You know, and uh, you see the substitution, they, it brought fruit in, in, in just not getting the goal. But um, I think, especially when the, the opponent went down to 10 man, we, we didn't utilize the wide areas of the pitch. But as I say, such is the nature of the game. In terms of your team and after today, uh, what is it the main thing you need to look to work at? I see young Avery coming on, a, a player that likes to carry the ball just at his final passes or his decision in the final third and not quite at it yet. Well, again, um, we have a lot of work to do in the final third of the pitch, you know, um, especially we're, we're creating chances, but we're not putting in our way. So that is the main area.
Well, let's hope you, you get it together and be able to put it away, coach. Okay, then. All, All right. right. Then, yeah, Theodore Tapper Whitmore saying, creating the opportunities but not necessarily putting them away. They did put away one, hence their one nil win over Treasure Beach. Portmore defeated Lime Hall in the earlier game by two goals to nil. It was a draw between Harborview and Veer United and between Humble Lion and Dungle Holding. As it's not been a match week that has produced many goals thus far. And some interesting fixtures to come as well. Mount Pleasant, well, as Dwight Jeremiah said, only Portmore United only spent about an hour and a half on top of the table. Now Mount Pleasant are back there in familiar position after 15 games. 32 points, 10 wins from their 15. And yeah, Cavalier, Tivoli, Arnett and Dumbo Holding complete the top six. When Cavalier play, they have a chance to go back on top. They are now in third position as they have a game in hand. Treasure Beach and Lime Hall still in relegation. And Treasure Beach, as you can see, they are still four points away from safety. Malines, they play tomorrow and with an opportunity to, well, to extend the gap between themselves and the relegation zone as well. All to play for for Waterhouse, who might look to sneak into that top six if they can find a win against Mobe United and displace Dumbo Holden from that playoff spot. That's how it's looking for now. However, view they remain in 11th with 16 points and of course Humble Lion on 18. Mobe play tomorrow as well in their big match against Waterhouse. So, JPL on Sportsmax Plus tomorrow, the match we just spoke about, Mobe United against Waterhouse live on Monday at 7.30 p.m., 8.30 in the Eastern Caribbean. Mobe United Waterhouse. Mobe at home at Catherine Hall. Well, that's it from the Drax Hall Sports Complex. It's been an entertaining day. Two matches with, of course, Portmore United defeating Lime Hall by two goals to nil and Mount Pleasant with the 1-0 win against Treasure Beach. They do the double over the team from St. Elizabeth here in overcast conditions at the Drax Hall Sports Complex on the north coast of Jamaica. Ray and Nephew, Jamaica Premier League action. It's been a pleasure. Travel safe.